verse 3. He says, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification. Even your sanctification. It is God's will for every child of God to be sanctified. And look at it further. It is that you should abstain from fornication. You know, fornication comes, you know, it starts with the eyes, it goes into the heart, and it comes, you know, eventually people demonstrate it, you know. And the Lord was calling God's people to a different life, a life that is spotless, internally and outwardly. Look at verse 4, that every one of you should, should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Every one of us, every one of you and I, we know how to possess our vessel. We know how to live the life. We know how, you know, among the sinful world, we, we, we know how to live that type of life without blemish. That every one of us will know, should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. You see, sanctification happens and your life is honorable. Your life is beautiful. Look at verse 7. It says, for God has not called us unto uncleanliness. For God has not called us unto uncleanness, but also uh, unto clean, but unto holiness. You see now, a sanctified life will demonstrate an holy life. Praise the Lord. I want us to quickly look into one or one or two things before we before we pray. Now, the importance and the benefit of sanctification cannot be overemphasized because we are we are talking about the lasting benefit here. I've just given you a preamble. We know what, what holiness means, what righteousness means, what sanctification means, what purity of heart means, you know, but it's, it, there, are, uh, there are a lot of benefits attached to living a sanctified life. And the benefits is innumerable, you know, the benefits are uncountable to have a truly, you know, to live a, a, a life that is well pleasing unto God, you must be sanctified to have a true liberty in your spirit, in your soul, you need to be sanctified, you know, experience oneness, you know, in the, in the house of God for unity and peace and joy and tranquility in the church of God, we must be sanctified to be filled with the fullness of God and to live the Christian life to its fullest, it, it, it's a wonderful blessings, wonderful benefit. The believer must be sanctified if you truly want to live a fulfilled life. It is an indispensable experience for all believers of the gospel. It is a work of grace. I've told you before, it is the second work of grace. The first work of grace is salvation. It is the second work of grace of the Holy Spirit, whereby a believer is free from sin and is exalted, is you know, lifted up onto a higher, stronger, better life, on exalted to holy life and uh, holy heart. It is true sanctification and purity of heart that a man is guaranteed seeing the Lord at the hand of his rays on earth. You see that the benefits are, I will continue to enlighten you more on the benefits, but these benefits are lasting. This benefit of a sanctified life, it is innumerable. And go on to endow us, go on to, you know, pour out this benefit onto us. And as believer, we need to understand that, you know, living that life, it is the will of God. I've read to you in First Thessalonians, this is the will of God for you, even your sanctification, you know, that you should be, you know, live that life, abstain from fornication, abstain from all this inner impurity, inner pollution and defilement. Now, I'm going to talk about three things here. Number one, I'm, talking, I'm going to talk about the questionnaire, you know, the questionnaire before sanctification, you know. When you want to say questionnaire, you need to you just answer some few questions. You know, am I actually sanctified? I, I know I'm born again by the grace of God. Or if you're not born again, you know, you need to know whether if I'm not born again, you know, am I qualified? I will come to that level at some point. So you need to, we need to run through this questionnaire, you know, questionnaire before sanctification because self-examination is very important. Number two, you need to look at the qualification. Praise God. Qualification for sanctification. You know, am I qualified? You know, am I born again? Am I ready for it? You know, qualification for sanctification. And then number three is the quest, the quest for sanctification. You know, it is very, very important that you hunger for it. You, you are desperate for it. You wanted it. 
you know, and you 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 want to you want to get it. It 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 beautifies believers' life. It helps a believer to live a life that is well pleasing unto God. It, it makes a man to live the life of Jesus here on earth. Let's look at number one, the questionnaire. Why are we asking ourselves questions? It's for self-examination. It's for the purpose of examining ourselves. You know, a, 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 a true believer must examine one another. You must examine yourself personally. You might even tell your wife, my husband, can you examine me? How is my Christian life? Speak to your brother, speak to your wife, speak to your husband, my husband. You know, what do you, how do you think I'm doing spiritually? You know, am I sanctified? You know, it's good to check up like that because your husband knows you better than any other person. Your wife knows you better than any other person. Your children know you better than any other person. Your pastor know you. You can check up sometimes. Right? So it's very important because if you don't check up, how do you know? How do you know yourself? You know, actually, you know yourself, you know, right in yourself, but it's good to check up sometimes, you know, and say, am I actually, you know, really, really a good believer? Am I sanctified? If you are not, you know, you, God can sanctify you. You know, why do we do exams? You know, you, you're studying is to know whether what you are actually studying is, is receptive. You understand and you know what you are studying, why you do exam, isn't it? So as believers, we are encouraged to, you know, examine ourselves. And when you are examining yourself, you ask yourself questions, you know, and now we're going to run through this question, but let's look at Second uh, Corinthians chapter 13, uh, verse 5. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. That is where he was saying to us that we should examine ourselves. Examine us. Look at Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. In verse 5, it says, examine yourselves whether ye be in faith. Examine yourself whether ye be in faith Prove your own selves. Prove you. Prove, just prove your. You know, scrutinize yourself. Prove your own selves. It says, "Know ye not your own selves? How Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobate." So, as believers, there is need for self check. You know, you do self audit. You know, you look at your life. Am I growing spiritually? Since the time I'm born again, am I actually? Am I stagnant? Am I growing? Am I getting stronger spiritually? Or I'm going down the hill? So when you, when you ask yourself those questions, it will help you to be able to improve. You know, in the world, in a place of work, we do appraisal. You know, you appraise yourself. You check out, you know, your manager calls you, well, how, do, how are you doing here? And then you use SWOT. You know, what is your strength? What is your weaknesses? What is your strength? You know, what are your threats? What are the opportunities? Believers, we need to do this even at this stage. So we're going to answer some questionnaires. We're going to go through these questionnaires. Number one is, you know, as believer, just to know whether you are sanctified or not. And I will tell you, you can answer, your, you can answer this question as I've, I've showed you on this slide now. You know, number one is, what, what length of time does confession of sin takes in your prayers? You know, are you the one that confesses all the time? Every moment, Lord, I've sinned again, I've sinned again, forgive me. Lord, Lord, I've done this again, you know, and you're confessing almost every second, every, almost every hour, you know, you just, you just cannot do without sin, you know, you need to check up, am I really born again, am I really sanctified, you know, if, because if you can, you can say I'm sanctified, you know, but how often, you know, how often do you confess sin, you know, how frequent, because, you know, the grace of God is sufficient, and that grace can keep us from sinning. That grace is sufficient. The blood of Jesus is very powerful. It can help us to be able to live a life that is well pleasing unto. Look at Romans chapter six. Look at Romans chapter six, and I'm going to read from verse one. Romans chapter six. It says, "What shall we say then? You know, shall we continue in sin that grace abound?" It says, "God forbid." In verse two, God forbid. How shall we? that are dead to sin, live any longer daring, you know? So if you are the one that, you know, you, you, you are confessing sins all the time, you are always committing one sin or the other, you know, you need to check yourself. Am I really born again? You know, is my name written in the book of life? You know, uh, you know, so, and then you, you, you put that aside. And then you go to the second question. Is your heart constantly boiling pot for of all sort of passion, you know? Do you ruminate all the time for, you know, 
in in concupiscences, or do you have some inordinate affection? You know, is your heart boiling with all sorts of evil passions? All right, uh, you know, or worldly lust, or are you do you take offense all the time? Little things you are offended, little things you are touched, little things you know, or do you have unforgiven spirit? Or how are you controlling your temper? Are you the one that you know your temper can run rampage? You know you need to check out. You know if you are the one you fall into this category that you you know you also a passion is running through your heart. You know inordinate affection, also evil passion, or work, your heart is still in the world. You know the lust of the flesh. You still want to be like the world. You still want to adapt your Christian life to fit the things of the world. You know you need to examine yourself. Or you are the one that all the time, you know, somebody offends you, you you do you not forgive the person, you know, and you carry on and you keep remembering it and you keep telling people last year, that was what it did to me last, the previous year, and you are having a diary of unforgiveness. Or you are the one you can't control your temper, you know, are you really, are you really sanctified? You know, that's what the Bible is talking about here. Now look at the third question, is your conversation, because when somebody is sanctified, conversation changes you know, is your conversation your dressing your or your adornment to worldly taste is it is it to worldly taste or to godly taste you know when you are communicating among sinners is it a, a worldly conversation you know when you are draw you dress among you know among the the people of the world are you unique or your adornment is it you know complying and you know or conflicting with the things of the world you need to ask yourself that question because sanctification affects your communication sanctification affects your conversation sanctification does not only affect you or inward part it also affects your outward part is the inward and how toward holiness you know all you are, you want to you want to be like the world or you want to adapt your way of life like the world so that they can take you accept you and you know and then they wouldn't say your own is too much you know you need to ask yourself that question if the question is no your, your conversion is not right your dressing is, is 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 with the world and you are dormant you are still all those worldly things is still going around in your heart you are, you are not sanctified. Look at the third, look at the fourth question. As you pray, you know, daily in your prayers, to whom do you pray to? For what do you pray for primary? You know, some people, they just, everything they are craving for is I want this job, I want this car, I want this woman, I want that man, I want this thing. It's, it's all about high. You, you want, you know, is, are you praying for the things of heaven that will beautify your life? You know, if you are more of uh, I want the love for myself, or I want money, or all these ephemeral things, all these temporal things that does not count in eternity, you are not pro, you're not you're not sanctified. You know, you know, because you need to know your your affection. You know, your affection and is it in the world? Is it more in this world, or you, you have you have you know having affinity for the things that are godly and heavenly? You know, is your prayer only for vengeance, Lord? The, all these enemy you must kill them and destroy them or you are saying father forgive them for they know not what they do you know that is what you need to know what am i saying you know these are the questions you need to ask yourself you know if you are tending towards the vengeance and retaliation and no mercy you know you are not sanctified as yet you know you just and it's very simple you can be sanctified today by the grace of god you know are you going for spiritual fullness or temporary fullness are you satisfied with your spiritual life or you want to have more? Is that passion for heavenly things coming all the time? If that is not coming, you need to, if there's a question mark there, you know, the fifth question, do you have conscience void of offense towards God and towards man? Or you are the one that says, well, it doesn't matter as long as God accepts me or it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really care. It doesn't, I don't care what my wife says. I don't care what my husband say. I do not care what in my place of work, work say, you know, I, as long as God knows that my conscience is, no, it doesn't work like that. Your conscience will be void of offense towards God and towards man. Man can say, yes, I can testify. Though I don't go to your church, though I don't live in your heart, I don't live in your house, I can testify that brother so-and-so 
is a born again brother. I can test whether there's something unique. I don't know who you are, but there's something unique in your life. And we can't fault you. You know, everybody is clocking in at 7.45, you know, and I, actually they came at 8 o'clock, but you are always right in the right time you got there. You know, those are the things, you know, you, people should be able to vouch for you, you know, and God should be able to attest that you are truly sanctified or you are truly born again. So the Lord is, the Lord is, you know, throwing all these questions to us. You know, look at the Acts of Apostles, chapter 24, verse 16. It says, and herein do I exercise myself. Herein do I exercise myself to ha always have a conscience, a conscience void of offense towards God and towards men. A conscience void of offense towards God and towards men. If your conscience is uh, full of, you know, somebody's offended by you there, you're offended by somebody there, and your life is not straight, you know, how can you, how can you say, God, my conscience is void of offense towards God? When man cannot even vouch for you, you need to be sanctified. Number seven, it says, is there any, is there any, is there, is, is there that, is there that love that makes you, that puts you, uh, your, that puts the interest, you have that love that um, puts the interest of others before yourself, you know, some people, they just, it's just selfishness, you know, they just, it's just about them, about their family, do you love, love do you have love for others, you know, is the love of God shed that blood in your heart, are you, are you feeling something for that brother, you know, and say, this brother is not born again, God save him, you know, this sister is not born again. Do you have the you know, genuine love, um, friend love, you know, the love that is pure towards your brother? Do you want your brother to succeed in life? Some people, they, when they are hearing that oh, somebody is succeeding, you know, somebody is, they are not happy, you know, and it's only them. I want to get blessed, you know, I want to get this. They're only thinking about themselves, only about their family. If you, you know, if you don't have that type of love, and your love is only towards yourself, you need to question your sanctification. Is that you're not sanctified at all, you know? So you need to understand that, that if you love others, love, love, love thyself, love, your, love yourself as you love thy neighbor, or love thy neighbor as you love thyself, you know, you know that that love is actually a, a, a love from heaven, you know? And then another question says, do you criticize those who do, you do not see, who do not see with you? You know, maybe take, for example, you know, you, you see another believer, you know, and he's a believer, you know, and the disciples demonstrated it before, you know, the disciples say, oh, these people, they are not following you. Let us call fire and destroy them. And you guys say, no, don't do that. You, you, you know, those are also believers. You know, there are some people that do not see the way you see it. And it, 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 it comes down to their spiritual level. All we need to do is to, you know, show them the right track. So if you are a type of person that is, a, you are just critical, you know, you are critical for everything, you know, and you don't take into cognizance their background. You just want to criticize that, you want to criticize that and criticize that, and you're not even looking inwards. Are you really sanctified? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Are you truly free? That's the last question now. Are you truly free from sin or bound by the fear of men? Are you free from sin? You know, are you, you know, are you bound together with the fear of men or worldly cares and worries and anxiety and worldly pleasure and enjoyment? You know, you are the type that says, oh, I'm born again, I'm sanctified. But, you know, what, what does it matter? Let's go to the beach and let's go and drink. You know, I'm sanctified, you know. I just, we just need to enjoy this life, you know, enjoy this worldly. And you said that you are sanctified. No, bro, you just need to check yourself. If your affection is just pleasure, 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 because you've got this, you've got that, you know, you, you are probably not sanctified. You know, if you are the one you want to please men, you are men pleaser. That is your, or you fear men. What will melt if I become sanctified now? Or if I, you know, live, if I maintain my stand now, what will men think about me? You are not sanctified. So we need, these are the questions we need to ask ourselves. And the, my brothers is that the good news is that we can be sanctified by the grace of God. The Lord can purify it. You know, the fear of men, it can deliver us from it. The worldly pleasure, you can be set free from it. You know, all this inordinate affection, the Lord can liberate you. You know, as you see, this retreat is a time of great liberation. Hallelujah. 
you, you can be loosed and set free. And the Lord will bless us in Jesus. Let's look at the second point, the qualification, the qualification for sanctification. You know, it is the, the qualification is not a rocket science, brothers and sisters. And I want to say this to you that every one of us on this platform, we are qualified. If you're not sanctified, we, you are as long as we run through these following things. You know, please note that unregenerated sinner are never commanded to be sanctified, uh, but to repent. You know, if a person is not regenerate, regenerated, you cannot be sanctified. You cannot jump from primary one to university. You know, you have to go through the process. You know, some people like to do that, though. You know, just jump from primary one to university and say, oh, you know, like uh, Elemas the sorcerer, you know, he's not born again. He, was, he wanted power. You know, he wanted the Holy Ghost. You know, so it doesn't work out that way. There is principle of life. Even in a place of work, if you get there for the first time, you cannot become the manager in a year's time, you know, in two days' time, or in three days, you know, in a week's time. You know, you've got to follow that step to be able to get to the level where God wanted to get to. So number one is repenting. Repentance is key before sanctification. You must have repented. Look at Acts chapter 3. Look at Acts chapter 3, and we're going to look at verse 19. That repentance is, is very important. Godly sorrow. You turn away. Look at, look at Acts chapter 3, and we're going to read from verse 19. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. It says, repent ye therefore. You know, so repentance, let me quickly say this to us, brothers and sisters. It is not a rocket science. You know, it's as simple as A, B, C. And it, what the Lord just wanted from you is an open heart. You know, just just know yourself. Just you know, just 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 repent genuinely from the depth of your heart. You know, we are all sinners in the past, and God delivered us. And by the grace of God, we are born again and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. You can also get there by the grace of God. You know, so repent. Look at look at what the Lord says here. He says, "Repent ye therefore, and be converted." So repentance. When you repent, you, you, you look inwards, you know, you look inward because it's key. You look inwards and you, you, you have a godly sorrow, you know, and you really you want to have a change of life. So when there is repentance, there will be conversion. Maybe if you are going straight, you know, and you know that route you are going to is a route of destruction. You just, you just convert, you just, you know, turn, make a U-turn. He says, repent it, therefore, and be converted that your sin be blotted out. Hallelujah. Your sins may be blotted out so that when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. You know, when you repent and you are converted, if any man is in Christ, is a new what? A new creature. You are converted. Guess what? The time of refreshing will be coming from the presence of the Lord into your life. The time of refreshing of a beautified life, a sanctified life, a pure life, a circumcised act, a separated life unto the Lord. So that the time of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. Look at Acts chapter 17. You know, in that repentance is very, very important. It's the key. You know, genuine repentance is not a peripheral repentance. It's not, you know, the oral repentance. It's only with your mouth, you know. You confess with your mouth, you believe in your heart. It's a combination of your mouth and your heart. Look at I, uh, Acts of Apostles, chapter 17, verse 30. Acts 17, verse 30. Look at what it says there. In verse 30, this was uh, Paul that was ministering here to, to the people of God. Acts chapter 17, verse 30. It says, and the times of ignorance, God winked at. You know, at the time of ignorance. Maybe you didn't mean to do those things that you have done in the past. Maybe you didn't mean to, you know, or you, you did it deliberately. You know, whether deliberately or non deliberately, you have done a lot of bad things in the past. And now God, God, God count that time the time of ignorance. You know, God sees that time as a time of ignorance. You know, you, maybe you don't know much about the blood of Jesus. Maybe you don't know much about the, the work of grace that the Lord has done for us on the cross of, of Calvary. Maybe you even know, but you just ignore, you know. So the Lord says, at the time of ignorance, God winked at, you know. But now commanded all men everywhere to do what? To repent. 
that repentance is key. You know, when you are repenting, you are acknowledging, you acknowledge yourself. You know, you acknowledge that you're a sinner. You know, if you don't acknowledge you're a sinner, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't see yourself as a sinner, you know, and you acknowledge the fact that you cannot help yourself. You are working your, as you are doing this, you're actually working your way to sanctification. Praise God. And then when you acknowledge that you're a sinner and you cannot help yourself, you know, some people say, oh, you know what? I want to stop uh, watching this pornography. I cannot. Yeah, how can you? Because you're not born again. You're not converted. You have not repented. You will carry on falling into that temptation. You know, oh, you know, I want to stop smoking and drinking. You know, I, you know, I truly, I know this can cause COPD. I know this can cause cancer. But you know what? I just, I can't just, it's become an addiction. I know, but if as long as you acknowledge it's an addiction, and as long as you acknowledge that you cannot help yourself, that actually I need help here. You know, I need help here. And you acknowledge that and say, and you acknowledge that the only person that can help you is not uh, the scientist. The scientist cannot help with that sin, you know. The scientist cannot help you with that immorality, that lie, that loss, that evil in your life. They can't help you because these themselves they are, they, they are, they are helpless. You know, so you acknowledge that there's somebody that can help you, and that person is Jesus. Look, and then you confess after you acknowledge, and you know, you confess and you forsake. You know, some people confess, but they don't forsake. You know, I'm a born again, and the, the friend of the world is still your intimate friend. You know, where you used to go before, you are still going there. You have not forsaken your sins, you are just deceiving yourself. You just confess, it's just a peripheral confession. The confession I'm talking about here is a deep confession that brought, that, that, that brought about a change in your life that makes you to forsake the old things. You know, all you need to do before, you do them no more. Romans chapter 10 verse 9, it says, if you confess with your mouth, you know, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart, you know, what, that confession must come from the heart. You know, that the Lord has raised Jesus from the dead, ye shall be saved. Look at Isaiah chapter 55 verse 7. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 7. So you, here it is very important that you do a, a genuine confession. Hallelujah. And the Lord will take you. He will not reject you. He will abundantly pardon. He will not forsake you. That is why the Lord Jesus died on the cross. Look at Isaiah chapter 55 verse 7. Isaiah 55 verse 7. Look how the Bible says in verse 7. It says in verse 7, it says here, let the wicked forsake his ways, and the unrighteous man is taught. You see, unrighteous man is taught, and let him return. You see, let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy on him. Mercy is available for us. Mercy is available for everyone. We will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Don't let the devil deceive us. You know, so those actual sin, the Lord can take away. All actual sin can be forgiven. But you know that there is also inbred sin. You know, carnal, there's still that, you know, carnal nature in you. There's still that, you know, selfish nature in you. There's still that inherited depravity still present. And that can be purged and purified at sanctification. Look, and then finally you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Amen. You know, for God, John 3, 16, I love this one. You know, John, for God so loved the word that he gave his only begotten. Jesus is the answer. You know, Jesus, once you are saved by the Lord Jesus, you, the rest is easy. For, you know, John, John 3 says, for God so loved the word that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus has been given for our salvation. I will also tell you for our sanctification. You know, but you need to go through that, that process, isn't, isn't it? So if, if everyone that believes in him will not perish, but we have everlasting life. He says, but God did not send his, his son into the world to condemn the world. He is not coming to condemn you. He's come to save you. He's come to redeem you. And then you are born again. Hallelujah. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then afterward, you are justified by faith. Amen. You are justified. Your sins are written away. You are counted righteous by faith. And then you begin to walk in. And then you are ready to move into the sanctification. Hallelujah. Yeah, and we are, we are saved by grace, brothers and sisters. So it's not a salvation, you know, is not a difficult thing by the grace of God. It is by the grace that we get through our Lord Jesus Christ. Saved by grace, not by, oh, I merited. No, we are saved by mercy. Amen. And then you, you go into sanctification. The third point, which is the quest, the quest for sanctification, the quest for sanctification. 
uh, brothers and sisters, we need to have this. This is very important. You know, um, the, the, when, you, when, you, when you are saved, there is something within you that says you need more. You know, when you are genuinely saved, you know, why do we need to pursue sanctification? You know, why do you need to quest? You need to have quest for it. Is because there is the spirit of God within you saying, my son, you are not there yet. My daughter, I I'm calling you to a higher ground. And why do we need it? Why do we need to quest for it? Why, you know, number one, we have a lot of benefit attached to it, you know, and you need to understand that once you are saved, that nature, that Adamic nature is there. You know, there's some that want to defile your conscience, that want to enslave your will. You know, that, that pride, that self-ego is still there in your heart trying to compete with your salvation. You know, sometimes people become incorrigible. You know, my brother, this is the way of God. No, 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 no. I, you know, I know I'm born again, but, you know, that incorrigibility, you know, we can't bend you. you that soft heart is, is that pliable heart is not there yet. You know, so you quest for it because we do. You you want all those, you know, a little bit of an incorrigible heart, a bit of those Adamic nature, a bit of those, you know, defy conscience. We want those things to be cleansed away. You know, fleshly loss and all these things. You know, is still going on. So it's warrant sanctification. You know, and then number two, why do we quest for it? Why do we pursue it? Is because God has commanded it. We have read Leviticus chapter 20, verse 7. You know, you know, my children, you have to be sanctified. Sanctify yourself, you know, sanctify yourself because I am the Lord Almighty, because I am holy, and I will also do my own part. So God commanded it, you've got to go for it. It's like you know, when you when you come to this country, or if you're a, you know, if you're an Indian of this country, and uh, you there are a lot of benefits attached to be a, a citizen. And maybe you are the one that you are not, you're not born in this country, but you became, a, 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 you, you have a settlement in this country and you became citizen, you know. There are some blessings that people who are just uh, on visa, there are some blessings that you get and people on visa cannot get, you know. When you are born again, praise God, you've got to go for something else, you know, it's called sanctification. And you know why? Because the blood of Jesus has been shed for it. The blood of Jesus has been shed for it. You know, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12, it says, He suffered without the gate that he might sanctify his people. Hallelujah. That he might sanctify. So the Lord Jesus has, has prepared it. Hallelujah. He, sanct you know, he, he suffered without the gate that he might sanctify his people with his own blood. Our Savior Jesus Christ also prayed for it. If you look at John chapter 17, you know, Jesus had disciples, wonderful disciples, but a little bit of uh, position seeking, a little bit of uh, selfishness was still going on in their lives. And Jesus had to pray for all of us. You know, he had to pray for all the disciples and everyone that will come to his presence. Look at, uh, look at that. In uh, John chapter 17, chapter 17, verse uh, uh, 17. In chapter 17, verse 17, it says, sanctify them. This was Jesus and good fruits without uh, partiality and without hypocrisy and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them you know uh, that make peace so he's talking about here about the wisdom so we're talking about here about earthly wisdom and then and also a uh, godly uh, wisdom then he goes on you know to uh, describe you know that wisdom and look at how he was describing it he said with purity he said it's pure well, you can see that with that purity also comes, you know, other attributes, uh, peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated. You know, when we have, you know, purity in our lives, there are all the things that come with it. It comes with gentleness. Like we read, you know, earlier, uh, we've already read about the fruit of the spirit, isn't it? And then you will see, you know, uh, temperance uh, as well is uh, a full, full fruit of the spirit. We should be able, you know, we cannot say, you know, well, you know, God has just so much so, you know, good to me. He has saved me. He sanctified me. You know, the only thing, you know, that is just left in my life now is that I've just, this, I've got this, you know, uh, this, 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 this fears, anger and temper and I kick everything and pull the house down and all those stuff. When I'm angry, I punch people and I beat them up. No, you know, that we've not, yeah, we've not even known God, you know, yeah, because God, you know, uh, when God walks on our hearts and he saves us and he sanctifies us, uh, God deals uh, with our temperament also. You know, in our, our lifestyle, uh, the way uh, we live, our, uh, that we live 
our lives. In First Timothy chapter five, uh, verse six. First Timothy chapter five, verse six. Moses, you you ask a means you did not receive because you are asking a means. You know we must ask a right. Look at Philippians chapter one, verse twenty-one. Philippians chapter one, verse twenty-one. Look at what the Bible says in verse twenty-one. It says, "For me, for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain." You can tell that that man, that man is lost for Jesus, is gone for Jesus. For me to live is Christ. You are living for Jesus. Hallelujah. You are not living for yourself. Well, all the self pride, self ego, self gratification, all those will be gone. That is why we need to be sanctified. Amen. And then you begin to have inner victory and freedom before you'll be crushed by the enemy. The enemy look at you, he throws the first dart into your heart, you resist it, throws the second, you know, attack into your heart, you resist it, and then throw the third one, and then you give up. No, when you are sanctified, you are strong, your inner strength is powerful, you know, you have the power and momentum to resist the devil, and it will flee from you. And then, you know, the power of God in your life, you know, increases as well. You know, if you have the time, read Hebrew chapter 4 verse 9. Is, is there on the system. I've, I've just uh, is projected on the system for us. So you can have a look at that. Then it becomes easy to love all men. When you are sanctified, you don't say, you know what? I'm a black. I'm an African. I don't deal with those Afro-Caribbean. They are not kind. You know, no, you are kind to Afro-Caribbean. You see your fellow brothers in Christ, the English, you love them. You know, sanctification needs your heart together, you know, with the people of God. It doesn't matter whether that person is not your blood brother or your blood sister or is not from your village. You just love her. That is that's why you need to quest for it. All those you know factions, all those hatred that I hate that one. You know I remember what one on one of them did for me in that country. I hate no. When you are sanctified, it becomes easy to. Is it going to work? It is not going to work. So so even in our uh, in so in our companionship, uh, the people that we are friends with. Um, um, uh, God, even uh, whether we are at school um, uh, or even also for young adults uh, who, who are also um, having their careers at this moment, uh, God expects uh, that we are holy in all our dealing. Now, God wants us to be separate uh, from sin. God wants to set us you know, apart uh, uh, from the world. So you are asking, you know, Jesus said, I'm not praying that you take them out of the world, but I'm saying you should sanctify them. You should keep them from evil. So, you know, you ask, yeah, okay. So if God separates me, so what does, what does that mean? What God doesn't take us. You still that young person living doesn't up root you from your neighborhood and takes you to heaven, takes you from the evil in your neighborhood. So God builds that consciousness in your heart through sanctification, that in your neighborhood, you know, all the boys are running around, the girls are running around doing stuff, you know, that a Christian shouldn't, God will remind you, you are, you are separated, you are set apart for my holy use. Then you are at work, you are a young person in your career, you go out for lunch or your Christmas dinner and all those stuff, or your friends invite you, you know, for birthday parties or that among your friends, God is reminding you, you are different. You, you've been set up, been set from the corruption that is in book. You know, you go on the media and you see things that are trending and you are wondering, oh, why shouldn't I do it? Am I not, you know, am I, am I not, you know, you know, delivered from the law? You know, I have not, haven't I been freed, you know, from the law? You know, yeah, you've been freed from the law of sin, but you've been enslaved to the law of the spirit. It is the law of the spirit of Christ that sets us free you know, from the law of sin, of death. So we are still debtors to God. God said, yes, I know, I know you've got your liberty, but I've separated you. You are separated from the world. You are separated from the corruption, from all the sinful trends in the world. You are sanctified. So that is what, you know, our God, you know, is saying, and I, and I don't know what you are also saying here. You say, oh, I've been praying, you know, actually, you know, been, you know, believing you know, a um, uh, uh, God, you know, for this. I'm going to end, you know, by reading. We've read it before, but I'm going to end by reading it. First Thessalonians chapter 5, 
you know, verse 23, and he says, and the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray that God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. He said, God is faithful. He's telling us about the God who said he will sanctify us. He's saying, this God who said he sanctify us is capable. This God is able. He said, and not only that he's able, but he is faithful to keep, you know, to his promises. And he said, he will do it. He said, faithful is he that called you, and he will do it. So I want us to bow down our heads and pray. We studied um, a sanctification, uh, a must. So this teaching is not just, you know, theory is practical. It's not just something that, you know, we could, you know, theorize about this, do an academic research on this. We could, you know, talk, you know, about this, you know, and debate about it and say, oh, will this thing be instantaneous or is it, you know, is it with his eye? He's not going to be looking around, you know, watch that one, watch that woman, watch that man, you know, so that he will not be defiled and lay everything on the altar, lay everything on the altar and keep, you know, keep that, keep all on that altar of consecration. I have I've made up my mind to follow the, follow the Lord. No turning back, no turning back. I will carry my cross and follow him. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me, it doesn't matter what they do. I will have laid everything on the, on the altar. I have laid my hand on the plow. No turning back. When you have that determination and you have that consecration, brothers and sisters, the Lord will bless you. And you, will, you eventually we will all get to heaven. Amen. And then finally, you know, maintain. There is need for maintaining a prayerful life of complete dependent on God. Complete depend. Let me read this one before we pray. Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Complete dependent on God. Our Lord Jesus Christ lived that evil. He didn't say, I'm the son of God. I came from heaven. I am of the Father. I'm, I am I'm God myself. Jesus did not do that. In the flesh, he was waking up early in the morning. Look at, look at that. Uh, Mark chapter 1, verse 35. He says, and in the morning, this was our Lord Jesus Christ. In the morning, rising up a great while before day, Jesus, he went out and departed into a solitary, uh, to a solitary place and he prayed. You know, he, he prayed. And Jesus maintained that life of prayer. I pray the Lord will help us to live that life in Jesus' name. And the Lord Almighty will beautify our lives. You know, this life, the devil will see it, he will run away. You know, and then the people of the world see your life and say, I, who are you? We are you come, you're, you are different. It's because you are living a sanctified life. And guess what? When the trumpet sounds, we will be there in Jesus' name. Shall we close our eyes and pray to the Lord? Shall we commit ourselves and say, Lord, I want to be involved in this, in this work of grace. If you're not saved, you know, say to the Lord and say, Lord, save me. I want to be saved. Save me, dear Lord. Show me mercy. And then if you are saved and say, Lord, I want my life beautified. I don't want all this uh, who had there, all this, you know, hatred here. I hate that one. I don't want all this racism in my life. I hate that group. I hate, you know, they are wicked. You know, you just love men. You love unbelievers. You love believers. You know, your life, people see it. They want to live that type of life. You live it. You know, let's begin to pray. Say, Lord, circumcise my heart. Lord, purify my life. Oh, Lord, sanctify and, you know, take away every pollution, every defilement, every corruption. Oh, Lord, cleanse me through and through. Make me holy inwardly and outwardly. You know, what you wear in the front, you are not being a, a source of temptation to other brothers or other sisters. You, your outward appearance is beautified. You know, does not tempt anyone. Begin to pray and say, Lord, my life must change. Beautify my life with sanctification, O oh Lord. Beautify my soul with sanctification, O oh Lord. Begin to pray and say, Lord, sanctify me. Sanctify me. And the, as you are praying, the Lord will come and sanctify you right now. If you're not saved, say, Lord, save my soul. You can get the two experiences at the same time. The mirror of the word of God. That was what Isaiah saw, isn't it? Isaiah saw God in the mirror, in a glass. He saw God in his beauty, the beauty of his holiness. And he said, woe is me, for I am undone, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips. And for my eyes have seen the king, for my eyes have seen God in his glory. And then immediately one of the seraph, you know, flew out with, with, with fire, with tongue of fire, and came and touched 
you know, the tongue of Isaiah and he was cleansed and he was purged. And that is what this place is saying. As we read the word of God, maybe you've had the word of God now and God is convicting you about sin. And through his word, he said that as we behold, as we see God in his, in his holiness, through his word, we now see how dirty we are. We see how filthy we are. And then we have to cry out to him as Isaiah and say, God, touch me. God, clean and life. And so, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. As many people on this platform that has not accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, and they have prayed, they've acknowledged they can't help themselves. Father, I pray you will forgive them in Jesus' name. Father, I pray you will cleanse them by your blood in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that you will, you know, write their names in the book of life in Jesus name mm -hmm. and for those who are born again they, they crave, they are questioning, they are praying they are asking for the life that is sanctified, for the life that is blameless and pure, Father I pray that you grant your children a sanctified life, purified heart in Jesus name, Father take away the heart of flesh, I mean, the stony heart and give them the heart of flesh in Jesus name, thank you Father for the answer prayers and Lord, our lives will be beautified. And when you come, oh God, in glory, when the trumpet sound, we shall hear the trumpet sound and we shall be with you in glory in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. God bless you in Jesus' name.